All right, cool. So I wanted to show you something with Python 3.14, which isn't out yet, um, but it'll be out in a couple of months. You can install the beta version already, and I'm running beta 2. And one of the new language features in Python 3.14 is something called t-strings. So I'm going to show you a bit about t-strings, like why you would need t-strings, what you can use them for, and what problem it's solving. So hopefully you're all familiar with f-strings. Um, so this is where you put the f before the string and then you can say hello and you can include things in brackets. Also, Python 3.14 has got really nice colorized uh, ripples, <laughs> which is pretty nice. So if I said um, place equals world and then f hello place, then we'd expect that to format the string. So f is for format. Uh, this basically replaces like the old uh, style that we used to have where we could do format like this um, or even older than that we had like percent formatting where you could do percent s and then was it like percent and then a tuple with things you want to replace so there's like multiple ways to do string formatting in python i think the important thing here is that you're doing the formatting at the time so f strings are great um and this is a nice way to inject variables and content into a string. Uh, T strings basically go one step further and they provide you with a way of sort of changing the way that F strings work um, by introducing a template string. And a template string means that you can do the replacement, the substitution later on in the program and you can kind of customize how it works. Uh, if you just use them on the uh, the REPL, it probably doesn't make much sense because you're going to do um, like this, for example. It's going to give you back where you normally get back a string. Now you're getting back a template object. And the template object is basically all the pieces inside. It's basically the pieces you'd get inside an F string, but the F string does the, f the rendering, which is like the actual process of putting the values in and substituting them. It does that for you, but in a template string, you get back the actual template. So you've got to, you get back the Lego bricks basically and you've got to put them back together. <laughs> um, if you're wondering like why on earth would I use that, I've been thinking about a, a cool kind of use case um, for this. And this is a pretty classic one actually. So um, you're working on a script that sends emails out to people and you've got like a function that takes a person, product, company or just like some parameters really. And then inside the function you've got um, like the email template and you could do f string to replace a uh, person with the name and the product and the company the kind of problem here is that if you wanted to change this template later um, let's say you wanted to have like different this is english obviously let's say you wanted to have like different localized versions of it so uh, different types of English or you'd want to have it in Spanish or you'd want to have it in a different language then you need to kind of change out that template so what we could do I guess is we could add like um, like a language argument and then like if like if language equals English US English then return like that um, and then you could kind of start to build up like inside your function you know, like, and then go, okay, elif um, language equals enau, which is Australian and English, then, you know, do the same thing. Um, the problem is your sort of rendering function, basically, you're stuffing all of the logic into it. Uh, and that's because of the limitations of f strings. So, like, the way you're rendering the template here and the substitutions you're doing are not really reusable components. So, a different way of thinking about this problem is okay what if we did this using t-strings so i've rewritten this problem using t-strings and um, what we basically have is a function that generates the template that we might need depending on the language so previously i know i was using like an if statement but this time we have basically got a template factory and i'll show you why this kind of makes sense as we go as we walk through the example so in this factory we've got uh, a dictionary which has got our language templates I've got US English I've got Australian English uh, I've got French for example and Spanish uh, etc and then each time I'm using a t string 
So this function returns back the template object. Uh, and that's important because when I ask for a template, like a localized email template, I give it the parameters. It puts those parameters into the template and it gives me back the template object. And that means I can actually do things later on that impact how the template is rendered. So my actual code would be uh, a little command line program where I'm going to get the person, product and company from the command line and then call this function called send email. So I'm going to get the template from my function that I showed you here, which is like our template factory. So that's going to give me back either this one or the Australian English one. Um, and then I'm going to render it. So I'm going to write the values into the template. So let me show you kind of how that works. So I've got, uh, this would be the default language, which is US English. Um, so if I swap that out for ENAU, um, then it's going to give you back the same template, but um, this time in Australian English. So that's quite straightforward. That's something we could probably do with F strings anyway, but we're kind of mixing the concerns of what is the email template with also what other things that we want to have in there. So to take that one step further, I thought, okay, so if it's, if it's Japanese, for example, then it's not that you would just replace the person's name in the string because like in Japanese, you would have a different, you would either have a different name or there's a different way of showing the name. So what you can do is just as you can with F strings, you can run uh, or call functions. So anything that you can do in F strings, you can do in T strings. So, you know, you can do like the, um, the format specifiers uh, in the string, you can do uh, like the debug specifier, you can just run uh, functions in here. So if you had a function called foo, you could just call that directly inside the curly braces. So I've added a function here called English the Kana um, that basically replaces the English uh, text with katakana. So it's a Japanese equivalent. Um, and I'm including that in my template. So I'm basically saying, okay, we replace the person's name with the value that I got from rendering that function. So that's also part of the template. So if I did um, JAJP as the template, then test user or test person, sorry, uh, becomes this, which is uh, just says test person, but in Katakana. Um, so I've got the ability to add extra options with how I actually render the strings in the template. So what we're doing basically is separating like the concerns of, okay, we're substituting the values, but also we can put more controls over, okay, how is that rendered in the template? And then also, when do we want to substitute the value and what other rules might we have for the value? And then kind of the last thing I wanted to show you to demonstrate like what else you can do is I've got this, this function, which is the thing that actually turns the template back into a string. And I thought, okay, so, that um this is basically code that you're probably gonna this boilerplate code you're probably gonna copy and paste around a bit for for t strings uh, and this is how you get back from a template object to a string and i print that on the on the command line um so where you've got a substitution like the the name here or the company uh, or the product you want to use that's where you're doing something called interpolation so you're sort of substituting the value back into a string so you're rendering it back into a string and because it's a t string then i'm actually handling this as a template object so template is a template object and i'm not replacing the values until the last minute so i can add my own behaviors in here so i added a function called sanitize um where if the person's name includes a word that i don't want to render then i can raise an error so i don't have to write all that code in here which is the big difference between F strings and T strings. With F strings, I'd need to add all this extra code in this one function and have a mega function where I'd be like, okay, let's look at, does the person contain, or the product contain any swear words? How do we sanitize those? How do we make sure that we replace, I don't know, like HTML elements or whatever. And you end up stuffing more and more and more into this template function. Whereas what we can do is we can treat that as a utility and pass around this template object 
And then when we actually render it, we can add in our behaviors. So with sanitize, I've got just a simple check for the cleanest swear word I could think of. Um, and then if you were to run the function again, and then say it was uh, instead of test person, uh, oh, <laughs> why is it not working? All right, let's replace it with Japanese. <laughs> Let me try that in English. Uh, where we go. Uh, then it's going to catch that uh, and handle that exception in the sanitize function. So that's really how we're kind of splitting up the behaviors of how we render stuff back into the template and how we generate the template so we can hit handle the template as an object. Some other examples of this include like HTML templates and like SQL, for example. So um, at the moment, the way that you shouldn't you can you can write SQL queries like this. So you could say, um, you can do this. Uh, the problem with this way of writing SQL queries is that if value like includes uh, a single quote, then it basically escapes that string so what we can do like we can basically override the filter this is called SQL injection this is a really common type of vulnerability so what I was showing you before with the templates where I'm doing this sanitization later on in the process we could do the same thing with our SQL statement so we could say okay this type is fine but instead of F we're going to use a T string and then we're going to have um, we can have a function which is like run SQL query and it takes the query. So it takes that template object and then that run SQL query will actually do the escaping to make sure that the, the, the substitution of value into there is done in a way which is safe. That doesn't come with T-strings, that's something you'd need to implement. But what we'll start to see is that more and more libraries are going to start to implement these kind of behaviors. So things like SQL libraries, um, probably Ginger templates, I would have thought, uh, any kind of thing that renders HTML or any kind of format where you can't just stuff the string into the output, you need to actually do something with it first. Then we'll start to see more and more of these T-strings in use. Cool. Thanks very much.